Okay, welcome back. We're talking about periodic table families or groups. Make sure you have your periodic table close by. Um, we're gonna be talking about how periodic table groups, the vertical columns, um, they have certain things in common, and so we call them families, and they also have names. So group one, if you look, the first column is called the alkali metals. They, although hydrogen is in group one, it's not a metal, so we're not gonna include hydrogen in this. So if you're taking a look, they all have one valence electron. Now what is a valence electron? It means there's one electron in the outermost most orbital or electron shell. They lose an electron to form a positive one ion. Example, lithium plus one. You might just see it lithium plus like that, which is fine. And they are very, very reactive. So um, <clears throat> hopefully we'll be watching a, a clip putting those in water. So if you are doing your coloring, we can go here and pick any color you want, and you're gonna color in group one. And there's that. I'm not gonna include hydrogen. And then our data key, these are the alkali metals. Okay, so there they are. Second group is called the alkaline earth metals. I know it sounds similar to alkali metals, but this is alkaline earth, two words, alkali, one word. So if you're looking, they have two valence electrons. So it should, the configuration should say something like 2-2, uh, 2-8-2, two two, two two, et cetera. They lose those two electrons to form a plus two ion, like magnesium. And they are reactive, but not as reactive as group one. So group two, alkaline earth. Let's go to that. Choose a new color and color them in. So you have it. Alkaline earth metal. Sorry, I am messy here. Group next. It's actually not one group, it's the whole center section. Groups three through 12, we call them the transition metals. Um, one of the region's favorites to talk about. They do fill the D sub level. Now, if you're not in the honor section, you may not remember what that means or know what that means, and that's okay. Um, they have several oxidation states, so you should look. It's like plus two, plus three, some of them have even plus seven. Um, this is important. <clears throat> it's a unique category, a unique property of transition metals, they form colored solutions. So for example, here is a solution and it contains copper, Roman numeral two chloride. So copper is a transition metal and it forms this beautiful blue-green solution. Um, the water it was obviously clear and colorless and, this, and it makes that beautiful solution. So that is a property of transition metals that we definitely need to know. Going back here, choose another color. And we're going to go like this. And make sure you call it the transition metals. We're not going to color, color every element on here. I know that might upset you, but um, there's that. Group 13. You can call it the boron family. You don't have to, it doesn't really have a, a unique name. Boron is a metalloid, the rest are metals. They have three valence electrons. So we're kind of grasping here. <clears throat> we're actually not gonna color in the boron family and that's okay. Group 14, <coughs> carbon family. Notice that these groups all have the same number of valence electrons. So this continues on with that trend. Um, what is unique is that group 14 has metals, metalloids, and nonmetals, and um, it starts off with a nonmetal, and then you have the metalloid, and then we have metals going down. So the metallic character increases as you go down. So we're going from no metal at all to a little bit of metal to I'm all metal. And they have those four valence electrons. No need to color those guys. Group 15, okay, uh, if you're ever on Jeopardy, these are known as the nictogens, also maybe the nitrogen family. 
So again, group 15 will have those five valence electrons, which is unique about nitrogen. Ooh, nitrogen, those kinds of things can form triple bonds between atoms. We're not there yet, but you'll see something like this later on. Group 16 is known as the chalcogens or the oxygen family. Let me guess, group 16 should have six valence electrons, which they do. Um, oxygen can form a double bond between atoms. Don't worry about that just yet. No need to color those guys. Group 17 does have a name. Um, these are called the halogens. This is a unique group. Group 17 would have seven valence electrons. I forgot to include that. Seven valence electrons. What's neat about group uh, 17 is they have all three states of matter. Fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and acetine and iodine are solids. So I did want to color in those. So let's go to, to group 17. And that is the halogens. Okay. And then possibly the most famous of the periodic table groups are group 18. Sometimes they're known as the noble gases, also the inert gases, which means will not react. So why would they be called the noble gases? Well, think about this. Do kings and queens generally go down and you know, hang out with regular folks? No, they stick to themselves, they stay where they are. So that's why the nickname the noble gases came out. So they do not combine with other elements, they're very stable. Now, you might argue that some of those elements do have other oxidation states besides a zero. That means they don't want to gain or lose electrons. So who are they? Krypton has a plus two, xenon has plus two, plus four, plus six, but generally they do not want to combine. They have what we call a full octet, so octet means group of eight, valence electrons. They are stable, they don't want to bond with anybody else most of the time. So I will include them right here. And we will include helium. Now, I'll admit helium does not have eight valence electrons. It only has two. But they do have the full outer shell or outer uh, most region, which means they have all the electrons you could possibly have, the noble gases. Um, OK, so as far as coloring goes, Let's include the metalloids. So metalloid would be boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, and tellurium. That's important to know. So those are the metalloids. What else would be important to know? Um, maybe we talk about phases of matter. So if I have, oh, I don't know, maybe I have uh, yellow. So these, these are the gases. So again, that's not really easy to see and I apologize. These yellow outlines would be gases. Um, we have two liquids. Uh, I gotta do this dark blue. So bromine is a liquid. It's a nonmetal. And then we have mercury, which is a metal, which is a liquid. The rest are solids. I think that's it that I want to do. Yep. Okay, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.